video that you're going to watch today is one that will help you to make choices as to which strategy, that is laws, that can be used to solve non-right triangles. Not within this video, but in the next class, we'll look at one of those particular strategies we have not studied yet, which is called the cosine law. So in your notes today, what I would ask you to do is to create a flowchart, much like the one that's here, so that you can use it to solve problems in class. So as you listen to the video, what I would ask you to do is to pause it every once in a while and think ahead as to what you think would or should go into some of the blank cells. And as you pause the video, also take the time to sketch the chart that's being represented. Okay, so here we go. So when we get into solving triangles that have various different measurements given within them, or sometimes diagrams that have more than one triangle that are in them, you might need two or more steps to solve for a number of unknowns. So to solve for a triangle, and let's just refer to our triangle as ABC, you might recall that the sum of any angles, or sorry, the sum of the angles in any triangle is 180 degrees. We've already used that fact in some of the problems we've come up against. In all of our problems, we're often encouraged and or asked to sketch a diagram. And just an FYI, in the class that follows, what I'm going to have you guys do is to sketch a flowchart that doesn't necessarily incorporate these words, but will provide examples of diagrams that represent each of these scenarios. And by doing so, the hope is that you will be able to make correct decisions as to which law needs to be used to solve problems. So aside from sketching the diagram and knowing that the angles add up to 180 degrees, there are two choices that need to be made. One is to decide if ABC is a right triangle or if ABC is what we call an oblique triangle. Okay, so oblique simply means it's equivalent to saying non-right. Okay, so that means that there is no right angle in the triangle. So if we think back to the beginning of the unit, we, we started solving right triangles. So when looking at right triangles, you could use the Pythagorean theorem. So recall that the Pythagorean theorem generally was used when you had two sides and you wanted to find the remaining third side. Okay. And the formula that we used was c squared equals a squared plus b squared, where c is the hypotenuse, and a and b are the lengths of the shorter sides, often referred to as the legs of a right triangle. Beyond Pythagoras' theorem, we started using the primary trig ratios, and those trig ratios are sine 
cosine and tangent. And we know these ratios quite well using the acronym SOHCAHTOA. So SOHCAHTOA reminded us of which sides formed which ratio. So for instance, if we were dealing with the opposite and the hypotenuse, then we would be concerned with using the sine ratio. So from SOHCAHTOA, there are two scenarios that we can possibly imagine. We could be given a side length and an angle. And in all of those cases, we use SOHCAHTOA to find a side. So based on the sides given or needed, we would choose sine, cosine, or tan. Another scenario doesn't involve side lengths or finding side lengths, but being given two side lengths, we could find an angle. And then when dealing with an angle, recall how we needed to use the inverse keys or functions on our calculators, known as the inverse sine, inverse cosine, and inverse tan ratios. So much of what has been stated in this video deals with right triangles. If we now turn our attention to the oblique side of our flow chart, we'll have two choices. So with no right angle, we could use the sine law. And there are two scenarios that make use of the sine law. The first one, as you can see here, occurs when you have two angles and one side. So given that situation, not only could we find the third angle using our 180 rule, but we could then find any of the remaining two sides using the sine law. The second situation involves having two sides given to us. What's important in this scenario is that one angle be given across from one of the given sides. With that information, we could then go ahead and find an angle, and we could also later find the remaining third side. Last but not least is what would occur when none of these scenarios arise. What if the information presented to us in our triangle was different than what we've seen before? And this is what's going to lead us into studying what we call the cosine law in our next lesson together. The cosine law has two general formulas. The first one I like to call an SAS formula, meaning side, angle, side. And just to give you a visual of that, or what that means, is for side, angle, side, let's just draw a general triangle here, and we'll use some highlighting. What it means is that we would have this side length, this one, and then we would have the angle in between. So in this sense, side angle side is a great acronym to represent the information given in the triangle and also allows us to know that we need to use cosine law. This formula here, our SAS formula, our c squared equals a squared plus b squared, a lot like Pythagoras' theorem, yet we subtract off this amount here. We'll look at this later on in class. 
The last situation, triple S, 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 is side, side, side. And what that means, and different from what we have here, means that we have all three sides given to us. With all three sides given to us, what that allows us to do is to determine any one of these three angles using a specific formula. And that formula is the bottom one here, where C is the inverse cosine of this ratio, where A, B, and C are all given side lengths. Now you might have noticed as I flipped from one page to the next that these cells filled in again. There's no need to worry about it if you simply rewind the video to a point where you can fill in what you might be missing. So once again, take your time to take down the information to create a neatly organized flowchart that you can use in class and during assignments and tests. Of course, even during exam time, this flowchart would become quite useful.